Not to us, not to us. But to your name be the glory. Not to us, not to us. But to your name be the glory. Not to us, not to us. But to your name be the glory. To your name be the glory. To your name be the glory. There's been a 150% rise in the Chinese government's persecution of Christians in just one year. We don't carry arms. We will not carry arms. We don't teach carrying arms. But we can call on God. Our God is bigger than human ammunition. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fifth Seal, Episode 6. I'm your host, Norm the Master's Dog Dunham, a.k.a. The Evangelical Norm. Fifth Seal is a podcast to bring awareness and prayer to our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Every year I count down the top 50 countries on Open Doors USA's World Watch List from January to October. Twice a month I count down from 50 to number 31 and then throughout the month of November, which I dub to be Persecuted Church Awareness Month, I count down from 30 to number 1. It is a countdown, which is why the episode numbers go backwards. You're not going crazy. Yesterday was episode 7. Today's episode 6. Tomorrow will be episode 5 on to the end of the month when we reach the number one country on the world watch list, which is the worst place in the world for Christians to live based upon the persecution they endure because of their faith in Jesus Christ. So there's a little background on the podcast for those of you who are new. had a bunch of new subscribers over the last week. So thank you for joining us as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. That being said, it is Thursday, November 25th. Happy Thanksgiving. And this is our update on this from persecution.org. On November 22nd, the Myanmar military junta known as the Tatmadaw raided a cathedral, bishop's house, and church-run clinic in the primarily Catholic Kaya state in Myanmar. Over 200 soldiers and police officers raided Christ the King Cathedral in Loika, Kaya's state capital, as well as raided the Karuna Clinic and Bishop's House. In the clinic, the Tatmadaw forced 40 patients out, in addition to arresting 18 healthcare workers, including doctors, nurses, pharmacists, and volunteers. They also removed records and medical equipment. During the raids, the Tatmadaw denied people's access to the cathedral by blocking roads leading to the cathedral compound. One church official commented on the raid saying, quote, One group after another checked and searched the buildings, including the bishop's house, at least three times, unquote. Another church official, Father, Father Francis Sonyang, Chancellor of Loika Diocese, said, quote, We are carrying out charitable works and weren't involved in any wrongdoing. We have no idea why they raided us and what they searched for, unquote. This is not the first time that the Diocese of Laika has been affected by the tap. At least 10 parishes and the diocese have already been severely affected by the conflict, which displaced over 100,000 people. Additionally, over five Catholic churches in the diocese have been damaged by artillery fire. The conflict has had an especially intense impact on the predominantly Christian regions, which house the Kaya, Chin, and Kachin peoples, resulting in churches being attacked and raided. Kaya State, in particular, is a stronghold of Catholicism with a population of 90,000 Catholics, about one quarter of the total population. So, I mean, we can we can discuss on a different show, we'll, we'll do on the Master's Dog, we can discuss theology differences between Catholicism and Orthodox Christianity. But when we're dealing with groups like the Tatmadaw, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, ISIS, these people don't see theology. They don't understand that most Reformed Christians and most of Christianity does not consider Catholicism Orthodox uh, or Mormonism or any of these other these other groups. What they see is the name of Christ, and that is what they are attacking, not necessarily the theology. So this is a reason why we continue to pray for even these people. I mean, pray that they would come to know know the the true Christ and and worship God according according to Spirit and truth, right? But pray that they are able to worship because. As they are attacked, other Christians are attacked as well. And, I mean, none of this should be happening because of the name of Jesus, that they're being attacked simply because of that. So pray for, for these Catholics here in this area. Uh, um, that this these uh, persecutions against attacks and, and so on against Christians would cease. 
um, that God would intervene in that and that he'd be glorified in that. And that brings us to our world watch list country for today, which is country number six, Eritrea. A few facts about Eritrea. The region is Africa. The persecution type is denominational protectionism. The main religion is Islam. The persecution level is extreme. Population of Eritrea is 2,540,000 try again, 5,432,000, of which about 2,552,000 are Christians. So, little less than half the population. The government is a presidential republic, and the leader is President Isaiah, Isaias Afwerki. So, what does uh, persecution look like in Eritrea? What is life like for Christians? Christians from non-traditional denominations face the harshest persecution in Eritrea both from the government and from the Eritrean Orthodox Church. The EOC is one of the only Christian denominations re recognized by the government, and it is tightly controlled by those in power. Government security forces monitor phone calls, scrutinize activity, and conduct countless raids which target Christians, seize Christian material, and damage house churches. Christians can be arrested and imprisoned without trial. Many Christians are held in inhumane prisons because of their faith and their loved ones often do not know where they are or even if they are still alive. In June 2020, the UN reported there was no meaningful progress to address human rights violations in Eritrea. <clears throat> Non-EOC Christians and Christians from a Muslim background face extreme opposition from their families and communities and from the state often being denied crucial social services and other resources. There has been hope that a peace agreement with Ethiopia, but there has been little indication of this. An unrest at the Ethiopian-Eritrea border in fall of 2020 has threatened stability. Violence continues to worsen in Eritrea. Protestants and Christians from denominations other than the Eritrean Orthodox Church are particularly vulnerable to persecution. Christians from Muslim Prayer points for Eritrea, way we, ways we can pray. Pray that believers would grow and that their love would increase and that their faith would be steadfast in persecution and affliction. Pray Eritrean Christians and church leaders would have wisdom and opportunities to engage their government on the topic of religious freedom. Pray for those suffering terrible conditions in prison, held because of their faith, and for the Christian women and children whose husbands and fathers are in prison. Pray the Lord would show his grace to these families and provide for their spiritual and physical needs. Let's pray. Father, thank you again that we have this time to come together to lift up our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in you. Lord, as, as we celebrate our, our Thanksgiving here in the States, Lord, we, we recognize that our brothers and sisters around the world, while Persecution gives them not much to actually be thankful for materially that we all rest in, in your gospel and in our thankfulness for that, that you went to the cross and paid the penalty for our sins so that we can be reconciled to the father so that we can in repentance and faith. And that is why we follow not for a materialistic things, not for a better life, but for the redemption that you offered to us on the cross. Lord, we thank you that you have provided for us a, a social media platform, the internet, YouTube, Facebook, all these places where we can come together for, across vast distances to join our voices together and even across the, the, the span of time, as many people will listen later, download podcasts, take them with them, even days later listening to this and yet still joining their voices with us as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. Lord, we lift up those people in Myanmar that are... Uh, constantly coming under attack by uh, the Tatmadaw. Lord, this is the second time in a month that these Catholic institutions in that region have been attacked because they claim your name. Lord, we pray that, that you would work within the government there, that you would bring uh, that this, uh, this, this militia group, the, the Tatmadaw, would be shut down. Lord, and that uh, all people would be free to worship you as they see fit. And Lord, we do pray for our, our Catholic brothers and sisters that uh, received by the teachings of the Pope and tradition and so on, and that they would come back into an Orthodox belief in you uh, and in repentance and faith, Lord. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Eritrea. God, we pray for 
that you would continue to grow their faith in the midst of, of extreme persecution. Lord, that these brothers and sisters would still be bold enough to proclaim your gospel, even under the threat of, of imprisonment. And that you would use that witness to draw others to yourself, that others would come, even those who would persecute them, that they would come to repentance and faith in you through the witness that you have given them through these people. Lord, we pray for the church leaders um, and the Christians there, that they would have wisdom and ways to come together to, to fellowship, to disciple, to disciple one another, to grow in their faith and maturity in their faith. And we pray that you give them wisdom for ways to engage the government with the gospel, for ways that they can uh, advocate for religious freedom in these areas, Lord, and, and glorifying you by the proclamation of your word. We pray for those who have already been in prison that, that sit in, in horrible prisons, in horrible states, um, horrible conditions, Lord. We pray that you would be with them, that you would protect their health, protect their bodies, uh, that you would embolden them, Lord, that they would, even to the guards and other inmates in these places, that they would be preaching the gospel, that you would be glorified in all that they do, and that you would use that to bring others to repentance and faith in you. And again, Lord, we do pray that all these things would bring glory to you because it is for your glory and in your name that we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Once again, thank you guys for taking the time out. It's 10 to 15 minutes a day to join, uh, hear some stories about what's and to lift up our voices in prayer for them to, uh, to go before God, to advocate for them, for, for religious freedom, for protection, for the strengthening of their faith. I appreciate all of you coming along again. If you know anybody who would be willing to spend that time, 15 minutes, to join us as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. You can invite them to the Fifth Seal Facebook page if that's where you're watching. Send out an invite on Facebook. Come over to the Evangelical Norm channel on YouTube. Hit the subscribe and notification button if you haven't already. Get excuse me, all the content that is released there. Or again, if they don't have time to... Uh, watch a video they can download the audio podcast anywhere where they get those amazon spotify google play itunes download that mp3 put it in their earbuds take it with them and join us as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in christ and once again thank you guys for joining me as always preach the gospel at all times use words they're necessary until next time well until tomorrow soli deo gloria